Well, hello there, and welcome back to Shamblecraft. You join me here in front of the Villager Trading Hall and Simon's Base. And the reason for that is that we're actually going to get started on some community projects. And first up, well, now we do have a Villager Trading Hall. Uh, we have this nice little Villager Breeder here that feeds into it. But if there's one thing we know that we need pretty early on, it's, you know, food. We got that very well sorted. Villager trades, we got that sorted. What's missing then? Yes, we need iron. So what we're going to be doing, we're going to be going to a nice little location that Simon has set up. Hello there, Simon. And we're going to see if we can get started on a community iron farm. Okay, Simon. So where is this magical location of yours? It is spawn. <laughs> it is spawn. It is, it is I, Leclerc. So we are going to keep it in a spawn chunk, so it is loaded all the time. Well, we hope it's loaded all the time. <laughs> <laughs> it would be a bit disappointing if it wasn't. So basically, we're going to build it out over the water, just a little ways from spawn. You know, just a short journey of about 20 to 30 blocks. Uh, and then we're going to have it up in the sky. We don't know what we're going to build around it yet, but um, we have a cool idea of the actual drop shoot for the golems. Okay, so ba yeah. so basically it's just going to be floating above the above the sea a little bit out of spawn. Yeah, pretty much. Okay. And then at sea level is going to be the bulk storage area for people to help themselves to the iron and also a dispenser system so you can clear your inventory and then press a button and it fills your inventory with iron so you can bulk craft blocks. Ah, oh, well that's neat. Oh, wrong button. So, there we go. Uh, we're pretty much going to build it out this way. Oh, wait, okay. Which, which way is this? This is north. Yeah, we're going to build it out north. Yeah, just out a bit further. Far enough away. It's going to be pretty much Tango Tech's design. Okay. Um, but we just got to think of a good thing to put around it. So, at the moment it's going to look like a skeleton in the sky, but eventually it will have a nice home around it. Yeah, so we're basically going to encase it at something so it looks more aesthetically pleasing in the long run. Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. So basically, step one now then is just you know figure out what sort of materials we do we need. Yeah. Yeah. We got Wolfie here just sliding in like a boss. <laughs> we need to figure out what materials we need and um, go from there. Okay. Well then, it sounds like a good plan, really. So I mean, let's just get started, shall we? <laughs> um, yeah. Okay. Uh, I might start bringing the villagers over because they're all ready to. Yes, what are you doing? <laughs> They're all ready be, to be moved over to the new island. Or to the spawn island. Yeah. yeah I might we got them over. We've got Shamblecraft we we got yeah, we've got Shamblecraft building an iron farm and Jess having an existential crisis in the sea. <laughs> I'm a bit sea now. <laughs> well, okay, I I can go make some chests and I can set up like a little platform here where we can start colour collecting materials. Yeah. Oh you don't Alright. Oh, yeah. So you know the way you talked about adding a donation spot, Valley? Yep. This is sort of what, well, sort of what I came up with. Ah, nice. A nice little sleek donation corner that says donations required. Here's what we need, as these will be used for the first community farm. Nice. And people can just put what they need into the two double chests, and they can craft whatever they need down here. Okay, how much do we need? Because I have, I have a hard. I'm about... not sure. <laughs> Okay, because I have half a stack of redstone blocks, and I got some glass, and I got uh, I got some cobblestone at least, so I can at least you know yeah. provide some of this. Yeah, see him. Okay, well I'm gonna go get some resources then. Yeah, the um, best thing that we can it. all do is at the moment is just start resource gathering. Yeah, well, I mean cobblestone rush, should be minutes. cobblestone should be the easy bit. I should have at least, I mean. 10, 12 stacks of cobblestone at the ready. Yeah. Um, I mean, most of us should, given the fact that we've demolished everything between Y20 and Y11 <laughs> beneath this island. I'm just but, letting I'm just letting it record now in case anything funny yeah. happens. Well, what I would I would say we do is we get some of the resources, not everything, obviously, because everything is going to take a while. A while to get, and by the time that everybody sees it, it'll be later on in the series, probably. 
a few moments later. Or in this case, a few months later. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, just this is going to turn into a project, so to speak. This is By, basically, whenever I edit this into an episode, I'm going to have to just add Spongebob music. <laughs> yeah, something like that. Boom, 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 boom. But yeah, that's what I would do. Uh, this might take a little while. <laughs> yeah, I mean, what I'm just going to do here, I'm just going to start knocking down these, uh, knocking down some extra mine shafts here and see if I can get some more cobblestone. Stone? <laughs> that is the patented valley found lava sound. <laughs> <laughs> of course you find lava. Of course. You're, it seems like you're very... Uh, I'm like Bali indeed. is very much attracted to the lava. It's Shaggy's favourite block. <laughs> Mr. Lava Lava. Mr. Lava Lava. Mm. Jess, this path is looking amazing. Wait, I haven't started. <laughs> or something like that. Well, okay then. So we've done a little bit of resource gathering. We got some cobblestone. We also have some here. We picked up a little down below. And we've also gathered almost a stack of redstone blocks. So that is a good bit of progress towards the community farm. So what we're going to do, we're going to put all of this... No, the iron's mine. We're going to put all of this cobblestone in here. Cobblestone is very easy to, to get more of, so I'm not going to really mourn about that. Uh, it also said they needed glass, and I do have almost a stack of glass. I mean, it's not much, but everything helps. I actually have a full stack of glass. Stack and a half, actually. I can actually smelt some more as well. So, with that taken care of, at least we have contributed a little bit to the project so far. Um, and we're going to be doing that as we keep going. We are actually going to... Every time we do some mining, we're going to make sure to take the cobblestone, the redstone, the things we don't really need straight away. And we're going to put it over there behind me in the community donation spot. Because that way, we can help get this iron farm built a bit quicker. And, you know, it, it serves the community. Everyone helps out. Uh, and we can, get, uh, we can get stuff done. We can get an iron farm. And, yeah, you know, that's just neat. All uh, uh, that's, that's just neat. <laughs> so, anyway... What I was thinking now, uh, I know that over there you can trade carrots, but you can also trade paper. And this got me thinking, I know that Fawn set up here, but we basically agree that we will share resources. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to cut these down, and I'm going to look into making a sort of um, old-style sugarcane farm. Not redstone-based, but just basically a sugarcane farm area out here on this little tip because that way I think we can get a lot of sugarcane which in turn will give us a lot of paper which can help us get a lot of books so yeah I think that is next well okay then ladies and gentlemen we've actually started on the uh, community sugarcane farm already I've got Simon here helping me out uh, we've made some line set and what we're gonna do now we're gonna see if we can sort of terraform a little natural uh, sort of island shape here that can round it off on this side. So basically just try and round it off a little bit, something like that. And yeah, I think what we can do actually, we can... Oh, I need to replace that shovel pretty soon. What I'm thinking is we can actually slim it down a little bit here to make it look natural. And then have that go there. And I really need to light this place up because this is going to get really dangerous soon. Ah, my shovel broke. Of course it did. Someone's sleeping. Thank you. But yeah, basically something like this. Oop, no, that's not supposed to be there. And then we can just continue like that. That should be a pretty good border for it, I think. Okay, I need to make a new shovel. And then we can just sort of stop them off out here. Because then we can, what we can do, we can put a layer of dirt here so we don't have to fill it up completely with sand. And like that. 
And I think we can just let this one go out like that. And we can do that. And that should create a natural looking terrain. And then we can just fill the rest of this up with sand. Like so. Well, okay. It's a design, I guess. Yeah, that'll work, won't it? Let that go all the way out there. And what we can do then, we can just... Just really finish it off like this. And... Like so. Don't know if Simon approves of this design, we'll see, but... Does that look okay? Let's see what Simon says. Simon says, clap your hands. Oh, God, that's a dumb joke. See if Simon approves. Beautiful. Goody good. Well then, ladies and gentlemen, I think what we're going to do, we're going to start filling up these latrines or whatever here with water, and we can get started on planting the sugar cane. So that's next. And now the fun bit of filling up all of these stairs. Luckily we had a lot of birch, which meant we can get these nice stairs that actually match the terrain somewhat. Uh, now all we have to do is waterlog them and we can get started on planting the sugarcane and WM Fawn hit the ground too hard. F indeed. Well, okay there, you join me here atop this little cliff edge here as we overlook some of the stuff that has already been built. So our house is all the way over there. Uh, and down here we have Wolfie, Mickness, and over there we have a cube that is Nuke that we've already seen. Uh, but I wanted also to show some of the other builds that have popped up on the server because some of these are just amazing. So here we have Sexy. Uh, who's built this amazing little uh, Japanese style nether hybrid cottage and it is just amazing but I mean I've played with Sixie for some months now and they are just amazing at doing builds like that and if we move further over here so if we go up here we will find Jessica's beach hut and I mean look at that that is just look at that that's to use a, an appropriate term, that's stonking. Jesus. And if we keep going down here, if we just go down here, we just follow the sort of beach here. Because I was actually on the hunt for some sugar cane, and I came across these builds here that I hadn't seen yet, and I decided we need to showcase this. We have this also amazing, like, new nether block houses here. Look at this, made from, like, the, the new nether woods. And whose is this? This is Badger. This is Badger. Okay. I mean, it's it's very on brand for Badger, let's be honest. It is very Badger. But that as well. That, I mean, yeah. Look at that. That That is the most Badgerest of all builds. But it is amazing. So, yeah. And here we have someone building inside a tree. A giant tree. Who is this? I hope they've named their builds because that makes it easier. But it doesn't look like they have. So I honestly don't know who this is. I'm going to find out by the time I make this episode and I'm going to put it on the screen. And then we get back on the other side and we are back at Simon's. And appropriately enough, we have some sugarcane. So we're just going to pick this up and move it to the sugarcane farm. And uh, do we want to go over there? Yeah, let's go over there and get that, get that as well. So we can fill up the sugarcane farm as much as possible and get that production going. And there. And that's it. We got all the sugarcane in. We've actually had some growing already. GG Simon. GG. Uh, we have our nice little setup here now. We actually have several lanes of sugarcane. We actually have sugarcane surrounding the entire farm as well. We have this nice little path here. Hopefully that's going to grow so we can extend it. And yeah, that is a good start for the community build. We now have a 
pretty decent wheat potato carrot farm there we got melons we got pumpkins we got beetroots and now we have this basically entire peninsula here covered in sugarcane so that is really really going to help with gathering resources which means that is another little starter project done but i'm thinking we're not done with the community stuff yet i want to get some more sort of shamblecraft community builds going or started so yeah what we're going to do we're going to head over and get started on the next project okay so i'm standing here inside my base and the reason for that is that well uh, there's a bit of a thunderstorm going on outside but i have an idea i was thinking what is the one thing we really don't have here right now we have a bunch of farms over here we got some uh, skeleton farms that shouldn't really be there maybe i should like that place up but what we also don't have is a bamboo farm so what i was thinking what better to do in the middle of a thunderstorm than to make ourselves a boat and go looking for some bamboo you know what M maybe we'll you know maybe we'll sleep first Okay, there we go. The joys of better sleeping. And now the skeletons are on fire. That's neat. Okay, so since the last time, what I've actually done, I've finally installed voxel maps. You can see how this island looks from up top. Uh, this is part of the permitted mods pack that Mickness has put in the Discord. So if you're playing on this server, you can just go to uh, uh, the Shamblecraft channel and you will find a... Uh, an archive file, the zip file that Mickness has prepared. So thank you, Mickness, for that. Uh, what you can see here is that the island is actually, it's not that big, but it's still quite big. It seems very big when you're on it. So here we have my house here. I'm going to be expanding that probably in the next episode. Uh, but what we need to do now, first of all, how dare you, you little, there you go. Also, I hope the game sounds aren't, too loud now maybe i should oh that doesn't make a sound does it okay let's let's just break some crops to see how loud this is now nah, that's fine that's perfectly fine um i figured out after reviewing the first two episodes i realized my game sounds were very low so i need to turn that needed to turn that up but anyway, what we're going to do, we're going to get in a boat and we're going to start exploring some and we're going to see, can we find some bamboo that we can use to make a community bamboo farm. So off we go. Okay, everyone. So we've been paddling for a good while. And while I haven't found bamboo yet, I have come across this little island here where I can tell that we have some different types of trees. And uh, that would be very practical because right now the spawn island really only has birch and that is a you know, i mean birch gets a bit out boring in the long run so yeah at least we can stop here and pick up some some more you know different types of wood just gonna go up here and see if i can see some no i can't really see anything we've got some animals here maybe we can manage to get those back i haven't really gone that far if you can you can see here i've gone okay I've actually gone a good bit. It's about 1,500 blocks east, but I mean, well, the things the things we do to get the resources we want, but at least we can get some different types of wood, uh, and that is also going to be very in handy when I start work on the next part of my starter base because I'm actually going to need a good bit of oak for that. Well, okay, then. We've gathered uh, about almost two stacks of oak i'm thinking if we can get two stacks of oak that's going to be great we got some dolphins did that dolphin just steal my sapling we got some dolphins keeping his company but as you can tell it's starting to get dark so we really need to move because this is going to get really dangerous really soon so the question is do we just want to make a quick hidey hole or do we want to go back to sea because i mean let's be honest the sea can be very dangerous in this game especially because i know there's some temples and stuff not too far away because i've seen them going over here 
So, uh, you know what, let's just, um, yeah, let's just head out to sea and see if we can find something. So we're here. What if we turn west and we try going south for a bit and see if we can find a different biome over there? So I'm going to do that and hopefully I won't die in the process. As I keep paddling down this way, I can't help but notice that we have a nice snowy mountain up here. And snowy mountains, I mean, I'm from Norway, that's nothing new. But what that means is we got some spruce. So what we're going to do, we're going to see if we can head up to these mountains and get some spruce. But what is this? It looks like, I'm actually going to bring the boat in case I don't come back here. It looks like someone has already been here before us. So someone has probably claimed this area for a build. Yes, we have Vin actually, who has been claiming this area over here. Well, I hope you don't mind Vin, then I'm going to just sneak over here and see if I can get some spruce and this terrain here is weird the thing is uh, we have pre-generated this world to avoid load times but what we noticed last season as well is that when you do pre-gen a world then sometimes you get some I think interesting results is a good way of saying it uh, you end up with some terrain that looks uh, interesting in the way that it, it's almost like it's not really, uh, it hasn't really finished generating. Okay, I might actually have to start digging here because this is, and I don't have a shovel, of course I don't. Uh, what if we climb up over here? You know what, I'm gonna try to find my way, way up to the, to the trees and I'll let you know. Well, okay then, so we made our way to the top finally. Uh, a bit embarrassing how long it took. And I can't help but notice that there's a lot of mobs here. Oh, please don't kill me. Oh, God. Oh, no. This is not going well. Go away. Go away. Go away. Go away. Can't you give me your bow? Okay, we need to. Let's just put some light here so we don't have things spawning. Oh, that's an oak tree. I don't want oak. I want spruce. This is a spruce. Okay, let's just put some light to sort of show where we've been. Can we do that? Ah, oh, that plan has backfired terribly. Ah, come on. It's an iron sword. It's not much, but it should be enough to kill you. Whew. Okay. So far, this is not really going well, but if we can just get a couple of spruce trees and more importantly, a couple of spruce saplings, then I'm going to be really happy because then we can set up... Actually, then we can also set up a community... Huh. Then we can set up a community tree farm as well with all different types of wood because right now, I don't think we have that. I only think we have birch and some oak, but not really that much. So if we can get some spruce from here, that would be really practical. So yeah, I'm just going to try and get as much of these trees as I can without dying. And uh, yeah, I'll keep you posted how it goes. Okay, so as you can probably surmise from the hole in the ground and the fact that I have a thing saying latest death... Uh, I had a visit by a creeper. The good news is that in the time it took me to get back here... It is now day, meaning no more mobs, and I can actually see things, meaning that you watching this episode can also actually see things. So what we're going to do, we're going to keep getting some more wood, uh, and then we're going to, once we have, I'm going to set at least like 8 or 10 spruce saplings and a little bit of wood, then what we're going to do, we're going to keep going on our boat journey and see if we can find some bamboo for that community bamboo farm that I want to build. But first, let's just keep getting some spruce. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, bad news. My axe broke. 
and I didn't bring another one, just to make some matters worse. Huh. This guy has showed up. Hello. You don't really have anything exciting, do you? Yeah, you know what? I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm just going to go. So what that means is that is really the end of our getting wood adventure, seeing as we are now, you know, we don't really have an axe anymore. I can, of course, you know, make up a crafting bench and make an axe and do all of that. But uh, I am pretty satisfied with the amount of wood I have right now. We should have got 10 spruce saplings. We got, if we pick that up, we got 40 oak saplings. We also got about a stack of spruce and uh, two stacks and some of oak. So, yeah, I dare argue that should probably be a plenty for what we're doing. The only thing I want to do, I want to punch these last spruce blocks up here. Uh, that was my Facebook. Um, we're going to just break those last spruce blocks so this can despawn as well because then we might get some extra saplings from here uh, and once this has sort of finished breaking down what we're gonna do we're gonna keep going and see if we can get some uh, of that mysterious bamboo that we have been going around for almost an hour and a half now trying to get I mean we can make that jump we can totally make that jump okay so if we start there, and then we ooh, we really need to jump from there. Okay, so if I break that, that should give us a nice running start. Okay, here goes nothing. Yay! Oh no, it's gonna... <laughs> that was close, but close cuts it. Okay, so let's just put our boat up, and let's go. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, so it is actually night again. This is the third or fourth in-game night now since we set off. Uh, and it's becoming clear to me that this quest for uh, this quest for bamboo might actually end up taking a while. So what I'm going to do, since we are at the edge of this birch forest here, what I'm going to... No, I keep saying birch. Why do I keep saying birch? Since I'm at the edge of this dark oak forest here, what I'm going to do is actually make a little base camp and from here I'm gonna try my best to navigate the world because if I make a little base camp here then at least we won't uh, be killed so let's see how this goes okay so I've set up what can only be described as the absolute most dirt basic shelter ever built with a little crafting table because what we need to do, we need to make an axe. Because as you can see, this is just not cutting it. So what we're going to do, we're actually going to use some of the stuff that we have. Ah, uh, if only we had a, do we have a mountain nearby? I see some stone there. Maybe we can try and get some, just a tot. Oh, heck no. That is just straight up danger right there. Okay, so let's see if we can pick up some of this stone without completely dying. Just so we have enough stone to make a stone axe. This here is risky business, because if we fall down here, then yeah, we'll be landing in, you know, Creeper City. So let's just get back over here. We can use this to extend our roof a tiny bit. Like that, you have a little more shelter. And then we can make ourselves a stone axe. We can actually make two stone axes now. So we'll do that. And what we'll do, we'll take down some of this dark oak. So at least instead of being out facing drowned, we'll be picking up some resources that we can use on this long journey of ours. Well, ladies and gentlemen, as the sun is rising here on the edge of this dark oak forest, we can see that we have more ghost saplings that won't be picked up. But we still managed to get about two stacks of dark oak logs. Uh, well, actually, exactly two stacks of dark oak logs. And we actually got 14 dark oak saplings. So with that taken care of, I'm just going to grab my crafting table here. Just do a final little check that we don't have any 
saplings or stuff left floating. We do, of course, have these ghost saplings. That is a weird issue we've been having so far. You can't really pick up saplings. But with that taken care of, we're going to keep going. And uh, hopefully, we should be able to get some bamboo in not too long. And I'm actually thinking uh, what we need to do, maybe we can try and cross this land here and then keep going from here because I see some biome changes down here that could work to our advantage. So what we're actually going to do, we're going to do like, we're going to make like the hobbits and we're going to head into the forest. Uh, of course, the very nice thing about these dark oak forests is they're so massive, you can basically just jump on top of them. While with the spruce forest, you sort of have to go uh, in between the trees but with the dark oak forest you can just basically run on top of them which is very nice because you avoid mobs and then we have this dang this is a deep one this is a pretty deep ravine can we manage to dodge it yes we can that's actually a pretty deep ravine can we does it go all the way to i don't think it goes all the way down to 11 don't see Anything actually? Hmm. We might. Ooh. Whew. My hand hit my coffee cup, and I almost got pushed into the ravine. But you know what? Let's pick up some berries while we're at it. Ow! I always get myself hurt on these bushes, both in game and in real life. So yeah, let's just pick up some berries. This is basically. This quest for bamboo has really turned into a very interesting uh, <laughs> resource gathering session. But hopefully we should be finding the bamboo that we are seeking in not too long. Let's just grab our boat and get back on the water. And see where it takes us. Well, Lady Luck smiles upon us once more as we find a shipwreck that actually had... Ooh, respiration, that is actually quite neat. That means we should be able to breathe underwater for a bit longer. We got some wheat, we got some paper, we got some pumpkins. And we're actually starting to run low on space here. The rotten flesh we're actually going to keep. And the reason for that is that we have a resource pack. That means that we can use the rotten flesh and turn it into... Uh, we can turn the rotten flesh into... Um, into leather which is a resource pack we have going here was that really the only chest i expected there to be more chests no that is literally the one hmm. i expected there to be more chests on a shipwreck this size because that's that one and you can't really go in here and there's no yeah no, that's pretty much it but, i mean let's get some enchanted armor going really and let's see if this luck will continue and we can actually find some bamboo soon, which is, after all, what we're here to do. Well, well. We still haven't found bamboo. But we have... Ow! But we have found this. Hmm. This must be one of these dismantled portals that the kids have been talking about so what if we stop stepping in the magma blocks you know what let's just take these magma blocks away what if we take some of this netherrack down and we can use it to cover up the lava Actually, we can actually grab our bucket, and we can have a bucket of lava. And then we'll just fill up the rest of it. Uh, because we don't actually need this lava that much. And we got rain. Nothing like a bit of ominous weather to sort of give you a little you know, atmosphere ooh, this, that must be the crying obsidian yikes 
And this means... With this obsidian block, we should be able to complete the portal. So let's just mine that down. And we'll just have to throw something out. Hide the lily pads. So let's get this. Put it on there. And we really don't have flint and steel, do we? That is the purpose of the lava, I guess. So what if we just put the lava there and see if any of it will light the pool? I'm just going to let it do that and I'm going to mine up this nether rack around it while we wait. Well, okay, so while waiting for something sensible to happen, I've basically taken the nether rack that I had and I've made myself a nice little cottage here. The portal still isn't lit, which I guess sort of makes sense. But I'm thinking um, this is definitely something that we're looking into because, as I said in the last episode, I really want to get to the nether. And uh, I think, you know, us finding this abandoned portal here is a sign that maybe this is the road we're taking to said nether. So I'm just going to sort of fill this back up, make it look a bit nice. Because I'm thinking this could be a uh, nice entrance to somewhere. And also looking at the map, I mean, it's a cute little gully. It's just a shame that... We've gone, you can see here on the map, if I zoom all the way out, that is at, we're at 2,000 in both, on both the X and Z axis. We've gone all the way up here, that is where we died, all the way across the sea, and that is the spawn island. That's the scale of the spawn island, and we are there. So that should give you a bit of a, uh, yeah, that should sort of make you realise how far we're actually gotten. So what I'm going to do, I think I'm going to say thank you very much for watching this episode. It really sucks that we didn't find any bamboo, but we are going to be continuing that quest. And hopefully we will have some more updates on the community projects next episode. Don't forget to contribute to the iron, uh, the iron farm, the community iron farm. And feel free to, uh, you, know, pro you know, if you have anything you want to donate to any of the farms, let us know. Everything is usable. Um, I mean, it's for the community. So, you know, you give some, you take some. But regardless, thank you very much for watching, and I will see you in the next video. Goodbye!